Welcome to DSCIAS. In today's video, we are going to cover three topics. First is draft laws on refugee rights need revision. Second, India's first water taxi service inaugurated in Maharashtra. And third, India and UAE to sign trade pact today. Coming to the first news, draft laws on refugee rights. Moral laws on asylum and refugees that were drafted by the NHRC, which is National Human Rights Commission, decades ago, but not implemented by the government, could be revised by an expert committee, according to Commission member Justice M. M. Kumar's suggestion at a recent meeting. Though India has not signed the United Nations Refugee Convention of 1951, Justice Kumar said the refugees and asylum seekers were entitled to the rights in Article 14, 20, and 21 of the Constitution. Roshni Shankar, executive director of Migration and Asylum Project, spoke of the NHRC's contribution in drafting a domestic asylum law and a moral law for refugees in the 90s. She suggested the drafts needed to be updated and converted into laws. The convention related to the status of refugees, also known as the 1951 Refugee Convention or the Geneva Convention of 28th July 1951, is a United Nations multilateral treaty that defines who a refugee is and sets out the right of the individuals who are granted asylum and the responsibilities of nations that grant asylum. The convention also sets out which people do not qualify as refugees, such as war criminals. The convention also provides for some visa-free travel for holders of refugee travel documents issued under the convention. The Refugee Convention builds on Article 14th of the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which recognizes the right of person to seek asylum from persecution in other countries. Now, coming to the articles mentioned in the news, the Article 14th of the Indian Constitution deals with equality before law. The Article 20th deals with the protection in respect of conviction for offences, and Article 21st states that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to a procedure established by law. Coming to the next news, which is about the first water taxi service, India's first water taxi service was inaugurated in Maharashtra on Thursday, which will connect the Navi Mumbai area to mainland Mumbai. Chief Minister Uddhav Thackeray inaugurated the Belapur jetty, while Union Minister for Ports, Shipping and Waterways Sarbanand Sonowal flagged off the water taxi. The 8.37 crore project will presently run on three routes, and the state and the centre have each shared 50% of the expenditure. In the given map, you can see the respective locations of the Navi Mumbai and mainland Mumbai. The Sagar Mala is a series of projects to leverage the country's coastline and inland waterways to drive industrial development. Sagar Mala, integrated with the development of inland waterways, is expected to reduce cost and time for transporting goods, benefiting industries and export-import trade. The project is mammoth, with 150 initiatives, with a total outlay of 4 lakh crore spread across four broad areas, which are modernization of port infrastructure, adding up to six new ports and enhanced capacity, improvement of port connectivity through rail corridors, freight-friendly expressways, and inland waterways. Creation of 14 coastal economic zones, or CEZ, and a special economic zone at Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust in Mumbai, with manufacturing clusters to enable port-led industrialization. Development of skills of fishermen and other coastal and island communities. The next in line is India UAE FTA. India and the United Arab Emirates will sign the first ever bilateral free trade agreement between the two countries on Friday. The FTA, which is Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement (CEPA). is expected to be in focus during the virtual summit between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan A statement from the Ministry of External Affairs said the summit will provide both the leaders an opportunity to discuss bilateral cooperation and exchange views on regional and international issues of mutual interest India UAE trade was expected to revert to the pre-pandemic level this year and touch 60 billion dollar in this financial year an informed source said Officials also noted that UAE was one of the foreign countries that had displayed interest in investing in the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. It is to be noted that UAE is India's third largest supplier of crude oil and second largest supplier of LPG and LNG. Renewable energy is the next stop for bilateral energy ties. The FTA has found enthusiastic support from the Gem and Jewelry Export Promotion Council, which has announced that the deal will push jewelry exports to the Gulf country to the level of 10 billion dollars. 